Saudi Arabia is known for having the world's largest dusty and sandy desert, with an unfriendly temperature and little to no rainfall. How is Saudi Arabia dealing with this extremely hot environment that is not human friendly? In this video, we will discuss a strange phenomenon in Saudi Arabia that will leave you astounded since it is strange compared to what you've seen before. Saudi Arabia's agricultural growth has baffled the world, and scientists need clarification about how the country resurrected itself from its dry land. Stick around this video to find out more. If you take a deep look at Saudi Arabia's history, you will find it is a nation in Western Asia popularly referred to as the state of Saudi Arabia. It is the second most populated Arab nation in Western Asia and the Middle East. It covers most of the Arabian Peninsula with a land area of about 2,150,000 kilometers. It is also known as the fifth largest, most populated country in Asia. But did you know that amidst these many people that reside here, Saudi Arabia has long struggled with desertification. There are woods, meadows, mountain ranges, and deserts in Saudi Arabia, which always speaks volumes about how the environment may look dissatisfying. The desert is not human-friendly sometimes, since the high sun intensity raises the temperature to over 110 degrees Fahrenheit. At the same time, the north and center of the country can experience temperatures below the freezing winter temperature. However, a mysterious change occurred that shocked everyone. With the help of modern-day technologies, Saudi miraculously solved its hot weather problem. Also, the country has to go into serious agricultural prey by converting many of its desert areas into green farmland. Only four inches of rainfall is seen in Saudi Arabia. That's to tell you how much rainwater can hardly be seen in this part of the world. Even though 97% of its population has access to safe drinking water, Saudi Arabia is one of the world's water-scarce countries. However, as much as we cannot do without water, the absolute water threshold of the country is always kept at 500 cubic meters per person per year. Hence, managing water is another exercise you must master in Saudi Arabia. Many people believe that oil is the most valuable natural resource in Saudi Arabia. Still, many Saudi citizens see water as gold because of the country's water shortage. The two main sources of water are the oceans and the groundwater, which are rapidly running out and 50% of the world's fresh water supply is found in Saudi Arabia. Yet the kingdom lacks water. How is Saudi Arabia surviving the entire water shortage in terms of agriculture during the past three decades? In a country with one of the lowest rainfall rates in the world, only four inches annually, large portions of the desert had been turned into farming land. Yet it's ironic that the country cannot fully provide water without relying on other sources. Now the question you want to ask yourself is, why does Saudi Arabia always look like a desert? Did you know that much of North Africa and the Arabian Peninsula is now a large desert that was once a lush jungle? One of the religious books, the Quran, recounts stories of places that, after their inhabitants sinned, changed from beautiful gardens with rivers to deserts in several chapters. As it turns out, these tales are not as metaphoric as we once believed. Today, it actually exists in Saudi Arabia. In almost 6,000 BC, early human societies populated the crowded Nile Valley. Several of those people once migrated to Asia and then to the rest of the world. Today, wheat, dates, dairy products, eggs, fish, poultry, fruits, vegetables, and flowers are among the goods Saudi Arabia exports to markets worldwide. Dates, formerly a regular part of the Saudi diet, are mostly farmed for international humanitarian aid. The Ministry of Agriculture is primarily in charge of setting agricultural policy. Other government agencies include the Saudi Arabian Agricultural Bank Saab, which distributes subsidies and provides interest-free loans, and the Grain Silos and Flour Mills Organization, which purchases and stores wheat and builds flour mills and livestock feed. Additionally, the government finances research projects and provides land distribution and reclamation programs. The private sector has significantly aided the growth of agriculture in the kingdom. This makes perfect sense 
because the government is in charge of starting long-term interest-free loans, technical support services, and financial incentives like free fertilizer and seeds, cheap water, fuel, and power, as well as duty-free machinery and raw materials, apart from a small coastal stretch in the southwest. Historically, date farming and small-scale vegetable cultivation were integral to the Arabian Peninsula's agriculture. In dispersed osis, the local populations could feed themselves from their little produce. In the 1970s, any extra food was sold out to travelers. The government also made necessary provisions for constructing rural roads, irrigation networks, storage, and transportation facilities. The government also launched another comprehensive program to support agricultural research and training institutions. As a result, the production of all regularly consumed foods has increased dramatically. Saudi Arabia is self-sufficient in some commodities, including meat, milk, and eggs. Of course, water is one of the paramount growths of Saudi Arabia's agriculture. The kingdom successfully provided the large water supply needed to enable the tremendous development of the agricultural sector by putting in place a multifaceted program. A system of dams has been built to collect and utilize valuable cyclical floods through deep canyons. Wells have been used to access enormous subsurface water stores. Desalination plants have been built to produce fresh ocean water for use in towns and industry, freeing up other supplies for cultivation. In addition, infrastructure for processing industrial and urban discharge for agricultural irrigation has been built. As a result, large areas of desert have been transformed into productive farmland. In 1976, only 400,000 acres of land were used for agriculture in Saudi Arabia. Still, by the 21st century, the country's farmland exploded and there were millions of acres. Amazingly, even though the desert covers most of Saudi Arabia's landscape. You may also ask how Saudi Arabia started planting vegetables in a desert. But, astonishedly, it all started with a family. The Al Battal, a family-owned Dover firm, recently signed a new agreement with Debit Shulk to expand Dover's greenhouse complexes in the Al Khaj region. Dover Corporation is building a greenhouse project to supply sustainably farmed and locally grown vegetables in response to the rising demand for fresh, premium quality vegetables. Dava Corporation already formed a joint venture with Debit Shock for a 44 hectare greenhouse facility in 2019. With the 36 hectare extension, it will control 80 hectares of grassland. The agreement is part of Vision 2030 which promotes long-term development in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Dover project, which will span over 80 hectares, will be divided into five high-tech greenhouse projects. The construction is currently in full swing. The first greenhouse project is nearly finished, while the second one is nearing completion. Schwalbe has begun the engineering and delivering greenhouse materials for the remaining three greenhouse projects in the Alcard region. Unexpectedly, many native plant species are now able to survive the harsh climate. Efforts are being made to preserve and even enhance the amount of greenery throughout the kingdom, from the desert vistas in the north to the southern region of Asa, under the auspices of the Saudi Green Program. According to the Saudi National Center for Wildlife, the kingdom is home to abundant vegetation, including more than 2,000 wild plant species from 142 families. However, about 600 species are listed as dangerous to human health, and 21 are believed to be extinct. The SGI recently announced the largest deforestation project. Having discovered a way to plant green veggies, Saudi Arabia still came up with a target of planting 450 million trees in the coming years. About 10 million trees have already been planted across all of the kingdom's 13 regions. Forests aren't the first ecosystem that comes to mind when one thinks of Saudi Arabia. On the surface, planting 450 million trees may seem ambitious, let alone the projected restoration of the kingdom's 2.7 million hectares of woodland, largely in the inaccessible highlands and Asa in the southwest. Greening of the desert, especially given the kingdom's rapid urbanization, but in reality, 
the Saudi government has come to the reality of using mechanized methods to plant green trees in its urban area, including parkland and a forest station within the boundaries of the kingdom's desert cities to counter the potential harm of dust in its urban city. So how does Saudi Arabia plant trees in their desert soil, if you may ask? Well, they've decided to use drones to plant 100,000 trees in a nature reserve north of the kingdom. This decision was made to develop vegetation cover, combat desertification, and cultivate local trees and wild plants in the Imam Turkey bin Abdullah Royal Reserve in Hale. Prince Turkey bin, the Minister of State and Chairman of the Reserve's Board of Directors, said the giant move for forestation aims to preserve environmental diversity and strengthen the protection of the ecosystem. The drones will accurately spread seeds over 200 hectares of vast land. As part of the Saudi and Middle East Green Initiatives, launched by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman earlier this year, Saudi Arabia aims to plant 10 billion trees in the kingdom in the coming decades. Trees will also help reduce heat and carbon dioxide from the environment. With the recent development, the desert will be greened, which will not only help to slow down global warming, but will also improve the quality of ventilation around the environment for a breathtaking lifestyle and beautify cities. More so, the enhanced SGI aims to provide security for the kingdom's biological growth and reverse dry and dusty lands, maintaining and improving the nation's limited water resources where rainfall is insufficient and groundwater has been drained. But even at that, Water continues to be a scarce resource to facilitate the growth of the new Saudi Kingdom initiative. So even when the country started embracing modern farming methods, deep groundwater had to be exploited to feed other parts of the farms and sandy towns. Also, seawater plants were developed to channel water from the ocean into various parts of the community. Constructing water from the ocean is also usually done on an expensive budget since the country needs rivers and natural resources and it receives very little rainfall to replenish water sources. However, there is always growing demand for fresh water due to high sun intensity responsible for quickly drying up little water in the ground. As a result, the Saudi government has deemed to rely on deep sea water supply channels to continue meeting the needs of a growing economy. In an interview with Arab News, Maria Nava, a scientific advisor for Green Arabia, said that the SGI strategic team likely will use treated waste water to water recently planted trees. She also said another goal is to reduce the amount of rainfall lost to the sea due to sand infiltration by introducing and improving water harvesting in the kingdom and dredging out soil close to waterways to create a lake. The investment regulations offered further benefits to partners of Saudi individuals or organizations in April 2000. Enacting agricultural policy is the responsibility of the Ministry of Agriculture, which also provides research and extension services to farmers. More than $90 million in financial loans, facilities and credit guarantees have been approved by the Saudi Agricultural Development Fund ADF, to help the agricultural industry. According to Muni Al Sali, Deputy Chairman and Director General of the ADF, the loans include a program to help small and medium-sized businesses with working capital and operational needs. By providing loans directly from the fund or indirectly through partnerships with commercial banks, the fund also supports importing agricultural items as part of the food security policy to lessen the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Additional initiatives include providing guarantees and financial resources for feed and animal production businesses and funding the first veterinary camel hospital in Saudi Arabia, shelter projects, broiler chicken production, a dried egg powder factory, and shelter projects. With an emphasis on enhanced productivity and diversification, the beneficiaries must cultivate at least 25% of the total land area. When the farmer complies, he receives full ownership of the land. As new farmers carry out capital-intensive projects following the development goals, the government continues to support them. The government also sponsors and supports agricultural research programs at Saudi Arabian universities and colleges that work with local farmers and scientists to develop new food crops to increase harvest and cultivate grains with higher insect resistance 
to increase farm output. The simple combination of clay and water had turned the harsh, desolate Arabian desert into a lush orchard. A remarkable achievement for a country that imports 90% of its fresh food. Egypt's Nile Delta had long been a reliable place to farm, despite being close to the desert, because of its fertility and productivity. The ancient Egyptians turned their focus from subsistence agriculture to developing a powerful civilization that produced cultural achievements still recognized thousands of years later. Despite sustaining civilizations in the area for millennia, that abundance evaporated in a matter of years, with the Nile spreading across the plains of the Egyptian Delta in late summer each year before subsiding again. When experts investigated what had occurred to the land's fertility, they discovered that flood waters had carried minerals, nutrients, and most crucially, clay particles from the East African drainage basin that supplied the Nile and dispersed them out across the Delta regions. Dating back 10 years ago, in the 1960s, Southern Egypt was constructing the Aswan Dam across the Nile to provide hydroelectricity and control flooding so farming for better output would be facilitated. This remarkable construction is 2.5 miles and 4 kilometers wide. According to Desert Control, utilizing nano clay will turn barren desert territory from sand to hope or wetlands. The Norwegian business that developed the nano clay process describes it as what you could see in your yard. Thin yellow soils with little organic content fail to absorb moisture or sustain plant growth. It's nothing new. Farmers have been using clay to improve soils for thousands of years, and because some crops can be cultivated in clay soil. Saudi Arabia did not just stop here. They have since embarked on a mission to search for resources that may be more valuable than oil. You know, water is still the paramount need of this country. Revealed by a soil scientist at the University of Edinburgh. Do you know that Saudi Arabia is looking for resources that may be more valuable than oil? For the past 24 years, the country has used buried water sources to grow wheat and other crops in the Syrian desert. Data from three different lands at satellites operated by NASA and the US Geological Survey are shown. In this data time series, the green crops in the desert were irrigated with partially trapped water during the last ice age. This fossil water flooded aquifers that are now deeply buried beneath the shifting sands of the desert. In addition to rainwater that fell over several hundred thousand years by drilling through the desert floor. Water is a non-renewable resource in this region because rainfall is only a few centimeters, about one inch per year. Hydrologists predict that it will only be cost-effective to pump water for about 50 years even though no one knows how much water is in the deep ground. Saudi Arabia can immediately access these underground rivers and lakes, irrigating the crops for the sprinkler system with the center pivot irrigation method, sending water straight to the roots with a drip irrigation system or a subsurface drip irrigation system provides plants with the required moisture. A drip system uses hoses with perforations to pump water directly to soil based plant roots. Despite the higher cost of this irrigation technique, farmers use less water. Furthermore, useful for fields with irregular shapes or slopes is drip. Precision mobile drip irrigation is a type of irrigation that was once uncommon, but is now commonplace. Instead of nozzle heads, PMDI uses drip hoses on a center pivot system to irrigate plants without soaking wheel tracks or investing entirely in a drip system. Central pivot irrigation is also employed. Long steel arms with spray nozzles are used in this irrigation technique, which pivots around a central base, typically electrically, to cover the entire area. Farmers use creative pivot designs to help lower water use without reducing yields to benefit the Ogallala aquifer. For instance, a farm family in central Kansas employs remote monitoring and control to track 57 center pivot irrigation systems. The farmers regulate the injections themselves when it comes to fertigation, but having remote control has allowed the family to spend more time on field reconnaissance and nutrient management. Farmers can increase farm profitability by using precision agriculture technologies like soil moisture monitors, computer or smartphone decision support tools, and remote irrigation equipment control. Effective irrigation systems are implemented 
and used by farmers to boost agricultural yields while reducing input costs. A small-scale farm's adoption of more efficient technology is hampered by high capital costs and a need for more information about the technologies. Precision agriculture tools may need more connectivity, particularly in remote areas with limited broadband access. What do you think about Saudi Arabia farming in the desert? Leave a comment in the comment section below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, share and subscribe to our channel for more similar content. Thanks for watching till the end.